It's the 25th of November 2018. I'm David Griffin. I'm here at West Hallam White Rose Cricket Club and I'm talking to Harry Porter, Ken Parrish, Dick Owen. Dick, can I start with you please? Can you just give me, you're the cricket manager here at West Ham now. What was your kind of background in cricket before you came here? I had many years at Hena, um, leaving there at the end of 2004 season, going to Belper Meadows, which is a time I'd like to forget yeah. about, and coming here in 2011 when the existing first team wicket keeper had gone to Spondon, so they wanted a wicket keeper, so I was asked if I'd come here and do that. So I did that for a couple of years, and it was obvious we got some decent players and a decent setup, but they wanted somebody to run the thing off the field, so to speak. And uh, I think it was mutually sort of agreed yep. that I might be someone who was able to do that, and that's what it's developed from. What is my job now? Um, I suppose to try and ensure that the cricket side of it goes as smoothly as it can in a local cricket club in terms of making sure we've got enough players throughout the club, yep. making sure we've got good enough players to uh, progress the club forward. Because two years ago, two years ago, we went voluntarily down from Division 2. You know this already. No. Right, two years ago we went down voluntarily from Division 2 to Division 6, Six North. We lost a lot of players, which, for reasons which I won't go into, we lost seven Division 2 standard players. And obviously we couldn't carry on in Division 2. So at the end of 2015 season, I think it was, or 16 season, we went from Division 2 voluntarily down to 6 North. And I thought we got enough decent players left in the club to get promotion, which we did, to 5 North, and last year we got promoted again. So we're back to Division 4 now. In my eyes, the um, ambition, aim in the next few years is to get back to Division 2. And we've got the first two steps, obtained the first yeah. two steps of getting back there. Um, can we do it in the next five years? I would like to think so, yes. After Division 2, it becomes a different ball game. It's a bit like Premier League football. When yeah. you get to Division 1 and Division 2, we've got to sit and think about it. But I think with the players we've got lined up and the players we've got in for next year, we should be able to get... I'm not counting the chickens, but no. I think we should be able to get back to Division 3 in 2000 and 2020, wouldn't yeah. we? You're obviously one of these young players, presumably, that yeah. uh, we've just been talking about. So where, where, what's your cricketing background? When did you start playing cricket? Uh, I'd have started when I was about seven. I think my brother started before I did, and I sort of followed him. But my family's been involved with West Ham for a while. Uh, like my uncle played, and my grandparents were here. And, um, so, what sort of cricket so, uh, were you playing at seven? Was this hardball? Uh, no, or? it, uh, it was a uh, quick cricket, the yep. orange plastic balls and blue plastic bats. Um, and then, yeah, so. What, what, Yes, yeah, so about 2003 would have been roughly when I started. Right. Um, uh, yeah. And so what, what do you do? Wait, what, what do you bat? Do you bowl? Uh, I'm a bowler. First team? Uh, yes, Excellent. I'm a bowler. Excellent. And you obviously enjoy it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's good. Uh, I had a good year last year, struggled this year. I tore the cartilage in my knee, but um, yeah. It's, it's and how old fun. are you, if you don't mind me? Uh, 22. So, I mean, because one of the issues, I guess, about league cricket, club cricket, is player retention. Uh, certainly people we talk to all the time um, as part of this project at clubs talk about player retention. So presumably you're quite happy to keep yeah, playing and, yeah. and make yourself available. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm quite involved with the cricket club and so, and I enjoy all that side of it as well. So that that would keep me more than anything anyway. What other parts, um, what other roles have you got then? At so Westall? I am the facilities manager now. Right. Um, Doesn't but, know what it entails yet. Yeah, not, <laughs> not quite sure what that entails just yet. Uh, that's a new sort of role, but I've been on the cricket committee for about four or five years, I think. Um, I was junior coordinator when I was still a junior, so I, when I was the last year of juniors, I did a lot of running the juniors with that, or helped running the juniors. Um, so so yeah, I've always been. Facilities involved. manager, you must be working closely. 
Yeah. With this gentleman. I, I will be, yeah. Still the head groundsman? No, no, mix the head groundsman. Oh, right. I, I help him. <laughs> so how many pitches do you have to prepare during the course of a, a summer then on, the, on here? We've got 13 pitches altogether. No, 11 pitches, sorry, altogether. And uh, probably during the season about 80 wickets. I should Blimey. 80 gets for yeah, 80 including games. Including cricket. friendlies yeah, and friendlies. Yeah. Over, cup games. Yeah. Over 60s, is it? Yeah, games over 60s, and, over yeah. 50s games, which. Uh, so that must be a challenge for you, Dick, then, to, to put teams out for, what, 80 games of cricket? We've got 80. Yeah, it's about 80 altogether. It is. We only get 11 first team home games, 11 second team home games. I think you're talking about other fixtures as well, aren't you? Yeah, there's, there's we've, only got, we've only got 11 first team home games. Yeah, there's, there's, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm jumping the gun a bit. Going back a couple of years, we had yeah. junior sides yeah. as well. Oh, right. you know, in, a, in a busy yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, at the moment, and it's down to lack of people, we've got no junior sets, which we hold our hands up to. Um, yeah, four or five years ago, we got quick cricket, under 13s, under 15s, under 70s, aren't we? Yeah. But for one reason or another, we let that go. So at this stage in town, we have got no junior representation. If we got promoted in the 2019 season to Division 3, then we've got to have at least one junior side, so we've got to do something this winter to, to get that. Is side. that a challenge generally for cricket, do you think? Juniors? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it is, really. I it's not getting them to play, I think it's getting them to stay. Yeah. Um, when they get to 16 and 17, they don't seem to want to be playing football and cricket like we did. They're off at the computers and That's you know, right, whatever yeah. else. Um, but it, it, the fact that we haven't got any juniors is purely simply down to West Ham Cricket Club. It's nobody else's fault yeah. whatsoever. We've been lax in trying to keep people. We've been lax in getting people to run the junior side. And it's, you know, it is at the back of the head sort of thing, really. Yeah. But you've got excellent facilities, haven't you? So facilities are okay, yeah. we can't yeah, you complain can. about, you know, yeah. about that. And it's safe for kids at 10 and 11 to come yeah. and play down here, you know, there's no roads, nothing in the area to, uh, for the parents to worry about that. Yeah. So we've got everything going for us in that respect, really. And which team do you work with on a, a weekend match basis? Do you, does it vary or do you stay with the first well, it's team? Very, it's very difficult because I still play for the second, so it's, oh, it, right. it's difficult to... Um, it's difficult to say really. Last year the seconds had less games than the first team, there were two teams less in the league, so I had a bit more time to sort of go with the first team, yeah. but it's it's trying to balance up turning outside for the second team and do that role with the first team, so it's, yeah. it's difficult in that respect really. And we've talked about the, the earlier on in an interview about the glory years at West Ham when they were winning the Border League, which of course you, you remember. What's it like for a young man like you that's that's coming into the game and you, you, you've got a very important role at West Ham and you're playing first team cricket, looking back knowing that there was a time when West Ham was kind of the powerhouse of, of league cricket, do, does it make you look back longingly and, and hopefully, uh, yeah, look forward I mean, hopefully? It, it is, uh, yeah, hopefully we can repeat that. I mean, um, four or five years ago we won first team won the league, the 2020 and the league cup competition before we obviously lost a few players and we had a good strong side then but yeah hopefully I can uh, we can do it again and be a strong side. I do, I, do, I do enjoy listening to their stories about the, uh, <laughs> some of the old days and the old players and some of the bowlers, the special bowlers with me being a bowler. Uh, Ken's been coaching me this year telling me how to uh, hold the ball better, see if I can improve my action a bit. Has it worked? Uh, it was <laughs> yeah, until, yeah. Until, I, until I did my knee, yeah, it was working. Um, so yeah, so it is quite interesting to hear and talk. And from your perspective, Dick, if you were playing at Hena, presumably you played against the, the West Ham yeah. side quite frequently, so what, what, what were those games like? What sort of side were they? I think with West Ham, we didn't have a lot of aggro because there were a few miles between us, weren't there? But, um, it's difficult. You can't compare anything, Dave, from 35 years ago to what it is now, yeah. can you? It's, it's, it's impossible to compare it, isn't it? But I do think that the bowling was certainly better in those days than it is now. Perhaps down to pitches and you know the bats weigh 
three stone seven. Were they uncovered when you were playing in your Well, they days? were, yeah, and it, yeah. Basically, they were. They By when would covers have come in? Mid 80s, I suppose, yeah, something yeah. like that. Wouldn't be most clubs perhaps had covers by the mid 80s, but before that, it was, you know, if it rained on a Thursday or a Friday, it was how many bruises am I going to get today, sort of yeah. thing. Um, but he had a good side, didn't yeah, he, back then? Yeah, presumably, yeah. your big rivals were down the road. Langley Mill, yeah, just a bit, <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Who um, was playing at Hena then, Dick, with you at that time? The first pro that we had at Hena was David Smith, who was on oh, Derbyshire's yeah. for a while. That was 1970. Three, I think. Yeah. And then um, the next, when it started again, we had Brian Bowles mm. for three years, 84, 85, 86, uh, who was 50 when he came to Ina, but still a formidable player then. Good player. Um, and he had three years, and after that, we then got into overseas and various other. Yeah. You were talking about Paul Newman earlier. I signed Paul Newman after numerous pints at the White, is it White Swan, Harry, in, in Spondon? Yeah, White Swan. Yeah. You know, Spondon. <laughs> Me and Mick Walters went to sign Paul Newman at the White Swan in Spondon. For Hina? Yeah, for Hina. This was 1987, I think it was. We had several pints in the White Swan, and he signed on the basis that it wouldn't be in the Derbyshire first team that season. Somebody got injured first game of the season, and George went to Headingley against Yorkshire, and he got 108 for... Never played, 29, yeah. Never played for Hina all season. Yeah. <laughs> and in those days, and it's couldn't replace. It still isn't. It's still the same now. Right. You can't. If if your pro breaks his leg first game or you're overseas, yeah. once you've registered them, you've had it. Which yeah. I think is a not very good. I mean, proper leagues allow you to have a subsidy yeah. pro or whatever. And who were the best non-county players that were around in, in that period? The ones that didn't play to, uh, county cricket. Oh crikey! Dave Long. Sorry, who's that? Dave Long. Dave Long. Where yeah. was he playing? Langley Mill. Langley Mill. Right. I would say, um, oh, yeah, throw you a few names. Neil, names Neil Sparrow, Neil yeah, Sparrow, Neil Sparrow, 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 yeah. Sparrow was undoubtedly the most. Bob Winthrop were consistent. Yeah. Um, Non-county players. Bowlers. Any bowlers? Yeah. Anyone that missed out that you think might have had a, a county career but didn't. Possibly somebody like John Truman, yeah. although Sandy Ecker didn't come into the league till no. 90s. Can't remember when. Yeah. Keith Stride. Um, oh yeah, Keith Stride. Where was Keith? Stride. Played? He was a good bowler. Yeah. He Where did he play? Played here at West Ham. Yeah. Right. Played here yeah. and he played at Langley Mill a bit. Yeah. Where else did he play? Played somewhere else. Can't think where. Yeah. 1975 Australians reckon Stride. He was the quickest bowler they'd played against really? all season yeah. when he played for minor counties. Um, yeah, it was great. I struggle to think of people just off the top of my head, but uh, but I think Neil Sparrow changed the the face of batting in the county league. Before, you know, people were getting fifties and sixties. Neil started hitting it everywhere, and, and, and you know, he went from people getting five hundred runs in a season to a thousand runs in yeah. a season. Yeah. And was that partly down to pitches or just change of attitude? Down to pitches. I mean, he came to. He played at Denby, and then he came to Ena. Yeah. Got well, batting on Ena. If you couldn't get runs on there, you couldn't get them anywhere, really. Yeah. Having said that, you still got hit it, and, you know. But I would say, up until the last few years, with Paul Borrington, Tom Wood, and people like that, then Neil Sparrow won more games by batting yeah. than any bloke that I remember. Yeah. You know, in my time, and I played in this league 1963, first year. So I've seen a few that. Indeed, yeah. yeah. So what league were you playing in in '63? Was that, that the that was the border league? Border, then, yeah. 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 Just we touched on pitches earlier. It must have been a massive change the the period when we went from uncovered to covered pitches. I mean, is it easier to prepare a pitch that's not going to sit under sit under the elements all the time, one that you can push the covers on, or is it no different? It is a bit easier. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So how many hours do you, do you spend on the ground now on a, an average? I'm up week. here three days a week. Really? Yeah, with Mick and also Alan Crooks. And not ready. planning to retire yet? <laughs> I'm getting ready now, yeah. Will you let him retire? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, of course we would. Um, when I, well, I struggle now because I'm at work, but when I was at school I used to come down in the holidays and stuff. Uh, 
I don't know how they've done it for so long, I can't do it. I don't know how well. There's a real art to it, isn't there? Ground, groundsmanship. Sure, there is, yeah. I, think, I think they'll carry me off in the finish. You, you know, think that's I, yeah, I love, I love the job. And where, where, probably a question for, for the two on the end here, is where does West Allam go in the future? Where does the game go? You've talked about you want to bring youth, younger cricketers back in. But where, where, does it, where do you see it in the next five to ten years? Well, locally, do you mean? Well, at West Allam and locally, yeah. Well, it, as I said to you, I think that... The, my ambition, and I think the club's ambition, is to get the first team into Division 3 or back into Division 2 by the, yeah. by the end of the next five years and get the second team to catch up the gap a little bit. The second team in Division 8, so there's you know, quite a bit of difference. Yeah. At the moment, we haven't got players in the second team that could really come in and do a job in the first team if we've got injuries or holidays or yeah. whatever else you get. But we do need to, to sort the junior side out. Yeah. We, we've got... Off the field financially, touch wood, we're doing quite well. Uh, this place is let out very often for parties and, and yep. whatever you have. On the field, we've got it round because two years ago was a low was a low point when seven first teamers who finished third in the league and were denied promotion by not having club mark, which I have to bring in, I'm afraid. Um, you know, to lose seven players there. Yep. Some went because we couldn't, we weren't promoted to Division One. Some went because they were fed up. A couple went for another reason. Um, you know, we've come back, we've bounced back reasonably well, I think. And if we can get promotion next year, then it would be really would be good. But I think that the main thing the club's got to do is to get the first team in Division Two, get the second team in Division Five, or something like that, and then build the juniors up. So we have got some progression coming through. We can bring our own players in when people go on holiday, rather than having to bring. 65 year old blokes in from other clubs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Last question really is about the formats of cricket because we're talking to somebody at the age of 22 so relatively at the start of a career and we've talked a lot to, to gentlemen for whom cricket was almost uh, a lifestyle you know turning up at grounds early on a Saturday yeah. playing a long game of cricket and then spending the rest of the evening usually drinking and talking cricket. Yeah. Um, but, but there are huge challenges, aren't there, for young people today? And you've already, Dick's already alluded to the fact that you know kids discover the the internet and, and and television and all these kinds of things. So, what do you see the format the format of the game? Do you see it changing, or do you think there will always be a place in league cricket for 45 over cricket on a Saturday afternoon? I'm I, well. I'm very. Um to say I'm 22, I'm still very much like I'm, Test cricket for me is the best format of the game still. So I enjoy watching the one-day internationals of 2020s, but they're more for a day out drinking for me. I, I yeah. went to Australia this winter to watch the Ashes, and Test cricket for me was uh, is the best form of the game. So the 45 over games um, are the ones I enjoy. But I, the, yeah, the younger, like I was saying about the internet, the younger children are doing that and don't really want to spend all day at cricket, and then. The older ones, sort of a couple of years older than me, really, or my sort of age, they want to be going into town at sort of seven, eight o'clock at night. So when you're playing an hour away or so, and it's a seven-hour day, people don't really want to play because they want to get back so they can go out drinking. Whereas I, I still want to finish the cricket first to play yeah. cricket and then do the drinking. So after. is the solution a shorter format eventually? Uh, I don't know. I, I would prefer not. I, pref I would prefer the longer game. Um, I mean, that we've, in the Derbyshire League, they've changed the. 40 over cup, well, 50 over cup games in the lower divisions to 2020s, right. um, which are good fun, but I would still prefer the longer games. And, and to be honest, they now play, we used to play one game of a 50 over game, and they now play three 2020s, so the day's actually longer. Yeah. So that's not really helped anything, but I think, I think it will end up going shorter. I, I think the only way kids are getting into cricket at the minute is through 2020s. Yeah. Um, because it's all excitement, music, fireworks and all that. Um, so I think it will end up getting shorter once the older generation sort of phase it's out and the younger it. ones take over, because I think they do. I think people prefer, will prefer, like, football, two hours of, two, three hours of cricket and then you yeah. finish. Sort Attention of thing, spans are short. Yeah. 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 Just yeah, very quick. Did, did you know that the Premier League are playing win or lose cricket? Yes, yeah. I heard that. It's gone through. Well, it's very interesting talking to you, gents. We've got right across the generations here. Thanks ever so much. And certainly for you, whilst uh, you've got your interest and you've got your traditional <laughs> head on, then uh, there's a good future for cricket. Okay. Thanks very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you. Cheers.